Hello YouTube Sidekick here with uh, an A4 tutorial video and we're going to start by learning how to install the module if you don't know how to do that. As you can see we have navigated to the GitHub page where you can find the code and you can see the uh, readme notes here and they are quite extensive because this is a big release. The important thing about installing mods in DCS uh, is where you put them and that is that you must put them in the saved games folder not in the main folder that contains the game. If you put it in the main folder that contains the game, all sorts of bad things can happen, and every time the game updates, it'll overwrite your mods. If you put it in the save games folder, uh, you won't be able to screw up anything in the game, and also the game will not overwrite it uh, when you get a new install version. So that's going to be the important thing about what we do. We found the zip file at the bottom here. We're just going to click it. We're going to download that to, honestly, wherever you keep those kinds of files. This is where I do, but... You may have your own place where you'd like to store your downloads. Now I'm not going to download it again because I've already got it. Uh, so I'm just going to cancel this. Okay, and now we're going to skip to the actual installation. So here we are. We've got the zip file. We open it. You see that there are uh, some documentation. And then there's a file, a folder called mods. Uh, inside the folder called mods, there is a folder called aircraft. And inside that aircraft folder, there is a folder for the A4C. Now, you go over to your DCS open beta in saved games and find a mods directory. If you don't have a mods directory, you can copy the whole mods uh, folder over. If you do have a mods directory, but you don't have an aircraft directory within it or folder within it, then you can copy the aircraft folder. And if you do have an aircraft folder, then you can just copy the A4C folder like that. Now, I've already done this, so when it asks me if I want to replace the files, I'm just going to tell it to skip it, uh, and that'll be a little bit faster than it will be for you, but that is really all that it takes to install the mod in DCS. Just remember to put it in the saved games directory, not in the main DCS uh, install directory. Okay, now we're running DCS in the background here. And we'll just uh, do this to make sure that we have the mod installed. And you can see from the splash screen, that's the new splash screen. So that's good news. And we can also see that it is reporting the A4C 2.0.0. Now you can see that there are a host of instant action missions. Lots on the Caucasus map. And quite a few on some of the other maps as well. So even if you're new to the mod, you can jump into any of those uh, free flight missions if you just want to get a feeling for the aircraft. The one thing I would say is that the aircraft will definitely surprise you with its roll rate. You may want to program some rates on your HOTAS, especially for the roll parameter, but uh, give it a shot and see what you think. Uh, for now, we're actually going to jump into the cockpit in a cold start mission. This is just a mission that I made. I put it on the Marianas map because I just happen to like the Marianas map. As you can see, we are cold, dark, and quiet. Uh, in order to get the aircraft started, the first thing that we are going to have to do is contact the ground crew. While they are connecting us, uh, we take a look, identify the RPM meter. And now we have ground power. You can see the huffer out the right-hand side there. And now we're just going to click the starter for a little bit longer than I just did. There we go. Here at start. At 5%, we're going to give the throttle one right click to move it to the ignite detent. Then we're going to wait for 15 percent give it another right click right about there and then we're just going to wait for the rpms to build if we mess up either one of those two steps we won't get the engine spooling up we'll know we screwed up we'll have to start again now at 40 percent we could tell the ground crew to uh, turn off the ground power uh, things are happening so quickly at that point that by and large you're just going to end up having the ground power turned off once you get up into uh, steady state which is probably around 55 percent just uh, finish letting ourselves get up to speed here okay we'll get the ground power turned off and once it's turned off we can close the canopy ground power's off so we can close the canopy okay so let's just get some things turned on here it's not really per the checklist, but some of these things take a while to warm up, so I'm just going to get them turned on before we go back to the checklist. And we start on the right-hand side, and we get the nav radar, and the nav computer, and the TACAN, and the uh, radio turned on. We'll get our AFCS turned on. 
All right, we will go and we'll set our altimeter. Now we're on the checklist. We're going to press the warning uh, lights enunciator, make sure that our oxygen and our fuel levels are actually reading correctly. And we're going to turn on the oxygen back here. Now I am going to check the checklist. <laughs> make sure I haven't forgotten anything. It's just as easy as bringing up the kneeboard. Just page through it here. Uh, so we've been through the engine start checklist. Ah, I think I... I forget the radar. Yes, I think I forgot the radar. So let's put it in standby. Okay. Free taxi checklist. Did the master test switch. Now we're down to checking the nav radar and then the nav computer. Now the issue with the nav radar takes a long time to warm up. So I'm going to put it in test. The light's going to stay on. When the light goes off, I'll know it's ready to test. But I'm not going to sit here and wait for that. Uh, we'll start taxing. We'll test it on the way to the runway. Uh, but the nav computer we test by putting the BDHI in nav mode. Put it in test. One more click. Yes, and the needles are form across. And we get 91 uh, and 223. So, all right. I think we are... Got the oxygen, got the radar, wheels and flaps, wheels are down. And so well, let's turn on the lights and let's uh, let's take this thing out on the road. So just a quick check. Uh, we are going to look at that RPM meter as well. We're going to want to memorize kind of where 70% is. That's kind of uh, the maximum we're ever going to want to use while taxiing. Let's get the controls up. They really help with the uh, ground handling. So we advance the throttle, give it a little bit more than 70, and then come back under 70 once we start rolling. And you can see me jockeying the throttle there on the controls on the left. Now I'm just going to try and follow the white lines. They're, they're for ground vehicles, but at least they give us some something to look at. So we're pressing the left brake, and now we're pressing the right brake. So I find it really helpful to have the have the controls up uh, because it's the best way for me to see how I'm modulating the brakes. My my pedals, I have some SciTech pedals, which are good pedals, but they don't provide a lot of feedback on the toe brakes, and it's hard for me to know exactly how much I'm pressing the brakes, but I find having the controls up really helps. The other thing I find, at least the way I have my pedals set, and I may think about trying to modify this. Not getting a whole lot of uh, stickiness with the brakes until more than halfway. Not sure why that is. All right, well we're straightened out here and now we're a little bit farther down the taxiway just getting ready to taxi out on the runway. Yeah, I was thinking I wonder if with the brakes it's because I don't have them set as sliders. I think I might try setting them as sliders and see if that helps, but for now uh, basically, I need to give them about a, a, at least half way on the brakes uh, when I look on the controls there on the left. And that seems to be where they kind of start to start to take effect. Okay, the astute among you may have just noticed that our light went off on our, uh, our radar test. So we are checking to make sure that it matches the value in the checklist. And it looks good. So now we set it back to standby. And uh, we can uh, we can call our pre-taxi checklist now complete. Haha. <laughs> okay, so back to taxiing. Yeah, one thing I'm definitely having to get used to is is um, we are using differential brakes uh, when we turn, and that means that uh, you do have to add a tiny little bit of power or maybe even more than a tiny little bit uh, every time you make a turn and that's something that it's taken me a while to get used to here alright finally coming down to the end of the parallel runway and we're gonna make our turn out to the runway where we will t where we well not gonna take off in this mission but where we will eventually take off okay well it's uh, a long ways from being a thing of beauty uh, but it is functional at this point, and given the amount of time uh, that I've really been focused on trying it, 
It's not going too badly. I do think that bringing the uh, controls up is a big help until you've gotten uh, a lot of practice under your belt. Eventually, I think I'll get the muscle memory and I won't need the controls, but it's uh, especially knowing how much brake I'm giving each one of the brakes is really helpful. So I'd recommend putting the controls up when you're practicing the ground handling for a little while, at least until you get good at it. However long that takes you, it's taken me a while. Okay, I'm going to do a particularly tight turn on the runway here just to try castering. So we'll just go straight here. And we'll go almost to the, all the way to the center line. And then we'll slow down and see if we can do basically like a 90 degree turn in place. A little bit farther here. Somewhere around there. Stop. And then we'll just... Alright, so you got to get it going forward a little bit. You can't just apply the brake and then the power. you got to get it moving and apply the brake. And then the wheel on the front turns and it whips you right around. Now the problem is stopping yourself and trying to stop without stopping completely, which we didn't quite manage there. And again, move a little before you press the brakes. Yeah, so this kind of low speed stuff, yeah, definitely tricky. Definitely something I need to work on, but it's not impossible. I do feel like I'm making progress, which is kind of the thing that matters. So I'm just going to try and get it finally lined up here. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, so you get the uh, installation instructions and the cold start there, and also a little bit of uh, ground handling practice. I do hope that you're enjoying the mod, or if you haven't downloaded it, you will now and give it a try. I think it's worth it. More videos coming on... Uh, on other aspects of the A4, but for now that's going to do it for me, so this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.